What's up everybody, it's Dave Wallace from the Medal of Honor channel, back with another episode of Six Records. I uh, just want to say a belated happy 4th of July, hope you guys had a good one, hope you still have all 10 fingers, and uh, still had a lot of fun though, and drank many beers. So anyway, you're recovered by now, hangover's over, it's time to talk about records. First of all, I want to say thank you all for uh, watching and tuning in and subscribing. If you haven't done so already, I would truly appreciate it. Just hit the little button down below that says subscribe, and then you'll get to know every time I talk about heavy metal records, which, I mean, who doesn't like to talk about heavy metal records? We all do, right? That's why you're here. So let's get to it. This is six records with an outstanding drum performance. Now I should also point out that this is not the best drum performances ever. Uh, it just takes way too much time for me to think of that. I just pulled out six records out of my personal collection and I thought, hey, this is a really amazing drum production on this. And so I figured it's a good thing to talk about, right? Something different. So let's get to it. Number six is going to be Sepultura, Chaos AD. This came out in 1993 on Roadrunner Records. Uh, so it's actually not my favorite uh, Sepultura album. Um, probably Arise is actually my favorite one, but uh, the drums on this are incredible. And what's really great about this one is this is when they really started to introduce uh, some of their uh, Brazilian heritage into, uh, or maybe I should say their uh, uh, influence and uh, what would come after this of course would be Roots which really introduced a lot of that Brazilian sound and with Brazilian sound that comes a lot of percussion and so the drum performance on this is not just Igor Cavalera who is amazing of course uh, but you know just other they brought in groups of people to, to uh, do uh, the to do the uh, percussion on this so uh, anything from big kettle drums and uh, you know just different tribal sounds not so much on this one but this is where it kind of started but yeah uh, this album Chaos AD like I said uh, before previous the one I talked about this one is that this is one of the bands and one of the albums that really propelled uh, metal through the 90s you know after Kurt Kaboom had killed off all the hair bands it was bands like Sepultura that said you know we're gonna lead the way and keep uh, a light a spotlight on heavy metal which is important um, I know a lot of people like to kind of say, oh, you know, mainstream, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not metal if it's mainstream. But the thing is, you know, if the public isn't aware of it and they're not selling enough, labels drop bands. That's what happened to all the bands in the 80s. So uh, it is important for some bands to be quote unquote mainstream. I don't think that was ever, ever Sepultura's intention. They just kind of became one of the more popular metal bands. But yeah, great performance, great record, Chaos AD. For number five, we'll go from Brazil to Sweden. This is Opeth's Ghost Reveries. You probably heard me talk about this album a lot. I love this album. It is certainly my favorite of Opeth's. Um, I just think it's a truly brilliant album. Uh, Opeth is Swedish death metal, but definitely a progressive death metal. And you can't have prog without an amazing drummer. Uh, in this case, it's Martin Lopez, who uh, does an outstanding performance in this whole album. He also played with uh, Amana Marth, among others. So uh, yeah, incredible album. This is definitely one that, like, I would take this on a desert island if I could only take, you know, a handful of albums. This would definitely go with me. Um, just outstanding performance in general, and he is really great at you know keeping the staccato riffs along with the guitar when necessary, but also um, knowing when it's best to just lay back and let let the other instruments do their thing and their time to shine. So, excellent album, excellent drum performance. Opeth, Ghost Reveries, number five. At number four, the fifth studio album for Death, Individual Thought Patterns. This one features Gene Hoagland on drums. The legendary Gene Hoagland. Uh, you know him from many bands that he's been in. Dark Angel for one. Um, and then of course bands like uh, Strapping Young Lad, Testament, even Death Clock. Yeah, Pickles the drummer is actually, uh, his drum performance is done by Gene Hoagland. Um, just a monster of a drummer. He's actually nicknamed uh, the Atomic Clock and uh, the Human Drum Machine. 
and he's that good. This album in general was when they were really going with a lot more of a progressive feel to their music. Uh, you know, Chuck Schuldner was just really kind of diving into that. And uh, you know, it's also uh, when they got the, the first video on MTV and that quickly followed up by uh, their video being seen on Beavis and Butthead. So, Anyway, you know, I love all of Death's stuff from the beginnings to the end, and this is definitely an outstanding drum performance on this one. So number four, Death Individual Thought Patterns. So we're going to go now from death metal all the way down to alternative. Number three, Allison Chains Dirt. Uh, Sean Kinney is the drummer for uh, Allison Chains, and man, I just really love his style. He's one of those drummers that puts all his drums kind of flat so you can actually see him playing, uh, which I appreciate. I mean, if I'm going to go to a live performance, I want to see them play. Otherwise, I can just listen to a record. So, um, But yeah, he's an outstanding drummer. He's got uh, this very tribal-esque feel in a lot of uh, the way he plays and uh, very you know easy to, to hear his sound when he's playing um, also really great intros to songs uh, actually uh, angry chair uh, is one of those ones where you, as soon as you hear it you know you just you know exactly what it is and uh, you know it's kind of got his signature sound to it so really dig the performance really love this album very much Allison Chains dirt kick-ass number three Number two, we're going back to thrash and to old school. This one to me just is one of those albums that I just know every single drum hit on this album. It's Slayers, South of Heaven. Uh, now this album, you know, after uh, Rain and Blood, Rain and Blood was a much faster album, which, you know, is great for the energy that Dave Lombardo has. Um, but uh, this album kind of had more mid tempos and that I feel like allowed Lombardo to uh, shine a little bit more. He was able to, you know, he can't just do nothing. He can't just play a standard beat. He's always got to put in fills. And um, so I think with a more open sound, a little more mid tempo, it allows him to actually do more fills. This album kills uh, just for the drums alone. I mean, Lombardo, definitely the most talented guy in the band. This is definitely the uh, era where I really loved Slayer the most from, uh, you know, Rain and Blood, South of Heaven, Seasons of the Abyss. Um, just amazing drums, and uh, Dave Lombardo is definitely one of the best. Great way to make himself really stand out and have his own name. It's just kind of one of those things that you can tell his style when you hear it. So you could, you could put him in another band and hear, oh, that's definitely Dave Lombardo. So love this album. Number two, Slayer, South of Heaven. All right, so if you follow me and you watch my shows, then you probably know where I'm going with number one, Rush, Moving Pictures. Now, yeah, I could have picked a lot of different Rush albums. Uh, this one, though, of course, you know, it's one of those albums that has probably the most air drummers in the world following along with this one. Um, Neil really just like by this time he was just so fucking perfect. He's just an amazing drummer and um, even the areas where maybe you don't realize he's an amazing drummer. Now I have to say you know all my life I've heard people talk about you know people who don't know shit about drums who say oh all he does is you know down the toms and if that's what you think if you're one of those people that think that you're an idiot and you forgot to add fries to my combo meal so get back to work uh, because it's actually quite intricate and planned out uh, Neil Peart was methodical in every little hit and there's even in those tom rolls there's always tiny little hits on other percussion instruments or cymbals around him and it's super complicated. In fact, in the documentary of uh, Beyond the Lightest Stage, Neil even talked about how you know he still never got tired of playing Tom Sawyer because it was always hard to play. And uh, if you play every note right, and that's the thing, you know, a lot of drummers can get away with maybe not doing everything exactly the way they do it on an album, as long as they're keeping a straight beat and they're playing the correct tempo in the correct places. But Neil wasn't like that. Every single hit was planned, and if he didn't do it perfect, he just was mad at himself. So um, this whole album, I mean, you know, everyone's probably heard of when it comes to instrumentals, YYZ, which of course has a lot of great drum fills. I wouldn't necessarily say it's their best instrumental, um, but it is just, it is definitely a great one. 
Uh, Red Barchetta is a great song, Limelight. I mean, everything on here, the Camera Eye, Witch Hunt, and Vital Signs, and all of these have incredible drumming to them. So um, I, I just think it's something that you can't deny. If you know anything about drums and you've heard this album, you cannot deny what a powerhouse Neil Peart was and will be greatly missed, of course. Number one, Rush Moving Pictures. All right, let's go through the countdown then. Number six, Sepultura, Chaos AD. Number five, Opeth, Ghost Reveries. Number four, Death, Individual Thought Patterns. Number three, Alice in Chains, Dirt. Number two, Slayer, South of Heaven. And the number one record with outstanding drum performance, Rush Moving Pictures. That's my list, but as always, I would like to hear yours. I do like reading in the comments what other people's ideas of great you know, lists are, and uh, it's a good way for us to communicate back and forth with each other. So down in the comments, put the list of your favorite outstanding drum performances from your metal or just music collection in general. I'd like to read about it. As always, thanks for being a part of this, and until next time, keep the horns up, keep the needle down.